guys, Bart Miller here with CampGurus.tv. Let's have a little segment on the camper levelers. Uh, we get quite a few questions, so I'm gonna point out the points that might help you so uh, that you can have more, um, more fun with your camper levelers and with your RV. So let's start off. If you happen to have the rubber mats, she'll show you now, and you happen to have the bag, then you will have your camper levelers in your bag and your chalks right here. Okay, I just set them all out. So pull them out of your bag, just like that, that, set that aside. Okay, now what you wanna look at is what kind of surface that you're setting these on. Now I'm gonna show you one for an example. See how rough and beat up this one is right here, okay? And you can see how nice this one is right here. Okay, this is what yours is gonna look like when it comes. Now if you have rocks and a lot of rough surface and you wanna keep them looking like that, you're gonna to wanna to use the rubber mats. I'm not gonna guarantee, don't come back and say that they're not gonna get scratched up, because they do. Now, sometimes the rougher they are, the more they grab too. So it's your call, I'm just showing you how I've kept mine uh, a little cleaner on some of them. So um, I play with these a lot. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is look at, if your tires will not let a full camper leveler go in between them, you are going to have to cut them. So we get that question a lot. Yes, you can cut the camper leveler, and uh, you should if they don't fit. Now on my RV, they fit just fine. Now you can either pull onto these or you can back onto them. So if I'm gonna pull onto them, if I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna put them in front because I'm pulling forward, right? If you're gonna back onto them, then you're gonna wanna put your leveler right back here, like that, and you're gonna wanna back onto them. So what you're gonna wanna do is Make sure whatever direction you're gonna go, all your camper levelers are pointed the exact same direction underneath the tires, okay? And if you're gonna use the rubber mats, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the rubber mat down. I'll show you right back here, so it's simple. We're gonna lay the rubber mat down, just like we would, right to the tire, right underneath the tire. We're gonna set that right underneath it, just like that to get the gription. So that'll help you get a good idea of how to use the rubber mat and the direction of which way you want to pull on your camper levelers. So I've got the camper levelers to where I can back onto them and I've got the rubber mats underneath all three. Now I wanna talk about this really quick. So what I do is you gotta make sure, and this is what's nice about the rubber mat, is you gotta make sure these are in there tight See how that's almost coming up like that and it's tight underneath there? That's what you want. You do not want these camper levelers sitting, and I see it all the time, just like that, if possible. Now, they'll work, but all three of them, you want to really focus, if you can, push them clear under the tire, just like the, the, the uh, match the tire, shove them underneath there, and then let them fall, okay? You'll get a lot better results. So, make sure you do that. Okay, so one of the tricks that I do, backing on or pulling forward, is I come inside my truck, if you have a four-wheel drive, and I go to four-wheel low. The reason you wanna be in four-wheel low is you'll see that it takes really, I can put the power to it, but it's really gonna move slow, so I get a nice movement onto my camper levelers. So let's give it a go. So like I said before, if you didn't catch that, I put my truck in four wheel low because I want the stability and I want my truck to back really, really slow. Now, if you have a two wheel drive, obviously you can't do that. But if you have a four wheel drive, that's the way I recommend it. Now, what you do is once you're on your levelers, you can see right here, I've got the mats underneath there. Every one of them is tied right on the mat perfectly. Okay, that's what you want. I showed you how to do that. If you didn't see that, please go watch the video at the beginning. Now. I like to come back just barely past level because when I put the chalks in and I go to set this, it's gonna roll forward just a smidgen. If you have slide outs, you're gonna have to do the same thing or you're gonna have to adjust what you like that's perfectly level for you. For me, I just go barely off on the bubble and then I let it uh, kind of just barely roll forward. So not perfectly level when I put the chalks in. Now, when you put your chalks in, people don't push the chalks in tight. 
okay? They just let them sit there. Do not let them sit there. Whatever you gotta do to get them tight so they're sitting just like that, that's what you wanna do. Do not leave them forward just like getting the camper levelers in. You wanna make sure whatever it takes, those are in there, they're part of that, and they're good and tight, okay? Because that's what's gonna do all the work, okay? So, just like that is how they should look. Now, that way when I go to unhook my trailer, that'll be super tight, no, I mean very, very, very little movement, if any. Okay, now one of the questions we get is, how do I get my chalk out? How I do it is, I hook back on my RV, so I'm hooked up to the RV just like I am right now. Then what I do is I put my truck in four wheel low again and I just barely back up. Not very far, barely back up. And you'll see what it did is it takes the pressure off the chalk. Then I can pull it right out, okay, and I can drive forward. So what you want to do is if you have not pulled, if you haven't backed up just a little bit, what happens is you still have all that weight from where it's settled on that chalk, so it's a bugger to get out. So you just have to put your truck back on so that you're ready to pull it, back it up just a smidgen, and then what you're gonna be able to do is pull your chalks out super, super easy. So I know a lot of you f figure out, okay, what if I back over my, what if I back off of them or something happens or I get one stuck? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm literally gonna do what I shouldn't do. I'm gonna back over these so you see what happens and then I'll show you what to do from there so stay tuned okay you guys so like I just said I'm gonna back up and kind of show you what you shouldn't do but it does happen so these I've backed all the way off right so this one's loose I can get that out this one right here though is totally stuck right and this is stuck this is stuck and this is stuck right so I've got myself in a predicament of what am I gonna do right so I've got one of two options right here. I can either pull forward just barely enough to get this out and this out. This I can fully remove right now. So I might as well get that right out of my way, just like that, okay? Now, I'm gonna pull forward is the option I'm gonna suggest to you because backing up over this makes no sense where you've got everything sitting here. So I'm gonna pull forward just barely. Watch what happens. Maybe. So I'm asking because I have to see everything right here and film at the same time. I barely pulled forward and all I want to do is get that loose. I mean, and you saw it was very minute. I pulled that forward. Now you can see that I've got these. Now my goal is going to be I'm going to back up so that I've got these clear up into there. So watch this. Now, the cool part is I'm still in four wheel low, so it made it really easy, my truck's not jerking, and it's pretty simple, and I've got everything out, and I didn't break anything, I didn't damage anything, everything was smooth. So I know it gets complicated, I know you get frustrated, but what you wanna think about is, what, where is your tire at, and what do you need to do to loosen that object without making it more difficult on yourself? Hopefully that little tip helps you.